Let's talk about springing arpeggios. It's a difficult across the string bouncing stroke that you will need for the Mendelssohn Concerto or say Scene de Ballet by De Berio. I can't show it to you slowly with a bounce, but I can show you what the bow is doing. You start on the G string, say a little above middle, up bow, play G again in a down bow, and then you rotate the whole arm over to the E string, you hit E and then turn the bow around on E. So you heard two G's and two E's. Down, up, up, down, down, up. No matter how fast you go, you have to have two G's and two E's. Now, once you understand that, you're ready to try and learn how to get the bow to bounce. So what I want you to do, hold your bow far back, maybe even farther back than you normally do. So pretty far back here. Take your pinky off, okay? And I want you to go from, say, above the middle just a little bit in an up bow. Bring your wrist really high, and then when you turn your bow around, you're going to drop that wrist violently, quickly. But you're just lightly, lightly going to cradle the bow so that you allow the bow to bounce. Now I'm disrupting the plane by dropping the hand. I'm not moving it in the same direction that the bow wants to move, which should cause the bow to be disrupted and it'll want to bounce. Okay? You need to get at least four bounces. Alright, now the next thing you need to be able to do is do it instead of from this giant wrist motion but to be able to do it from finger flexibility. You can still leave the pinky up. And the reason is, is that if I bring my wrist up really high and then I bring it down or flatten it to do the stroke, I have to bring it back really high to do it again on the next arpeggio. And that sort of pushes it on the string. So you can do it at first just to feel what it is to disrupt the plane, but then you really need to learn to do it from the fingers. That's pretty hard and it may take some of you a long time, but work on that first. All right, you can also try taking two and four off to get an easier control of the finger flexibility. You don't have to let all four fingers or even just three do it. So pop two and four in the air. I use my pinky when I do the reach right there. On, off. All right, now once you can do that, you're ready to start the string crossing. So remember this, you must lightly hold the stick. You cannot squeeze it, otherwise it won't bounce. If you hold it firm, it just chokes it. So maybe you leave two and four in the air, start above middle, flatten on your down bow, flatten the stick so that the wood is right over the hair. And we're going to absolutely string cross from the whole unit. The whole arm will move together. Try and get one bounce per string. And then once you can get one bounce per string, turn your bow around and catch that second E. The next step is to bring it back. Now, to be able to do that, you have to make sure you catch the second E with the bounce and you don't push it back on the string. Most students do this and they go back on the string. So when you turn the bow around, try not to disrupt that second E string. Some people actually even give it a little kick with the wrist to give it more uh, impulse to create more bounce. You might try holding it really far back here on the stick, farther maybe than normal. Raise two and four. Understand? It's tough and it'll take you a while to get there, but it's really worth the work. It's an exciting stroke. After you can do it with your fingers off, you might add your two and try it again. Then you might add your four so you don't have to do anything weird. Then you might go back to whatever your normal bow hold is and see if you can control it from that point. Okay? Good luck.